Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video review. Uh, a video review that I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. So this is the new generation Apple TV. Uh, obviously a little bit thicker guy here to my right, your left. That's the new Apple TV, the fourth generation. And the other guy here that I have is the third generation, so the previous one. And this is the awesome little box it came in. Um, I will have to say that packaged very similar to the, to the older ones. Obviously a wider box and also a sexy black box instead. Um, rather than being stacked, everything on top, remote and stuff on the right. And so yeah, they, they packaged it very, very well. I'm not going to get into that. I don't do unboxings. They're a waste of my time. So here it is. And obviously right out of the gate, you can tell it's thicker. And that's almost the only physical difference other than on the back, there's an optical audio port on the old one. There is not one on the new one. They also flipped where the micro USB port is. It's actually on the top of the HDMI rather than on the bottom. Um, other than that, not a whole lot of differences on the physical outside. Other than it being, you know, whatever, 40% thicker. I don't know. Um, maybe a little more than that. Not quite twice the thickness, I will say that. But, uh, it is a pretty awesome looking box, just like they always were. So it's not a whole lot of difference. It'll fit pretty much where you had the old one because the, the footprint is literally the exact same size. They stack perfectly. Now, of course, you don't want to stack them heat, things like that. But that's the physical of the actual box itself. Here in a moment, we're actually going to turn her on and uh, plug her in and show you what, what she does. The big obvious difference is the remote controls. So, oop, I'm upside down. Last generation, new generation. Last generation, pretty simple. Directional pad, uh, menu button, play pause. That's it. I mean, they made this very, very simple. Selector in the center with that little central aluminum button. Um, but I love this remote. I really did. It's nice and fast, small, easy to use, and uh, fits in your hand really, really good. The new one, at first it was a little funky to get used to, um, but a lot more buttons. So touchpad, which actually takes the place of the complete directional pad, and the touchpad itself is a button. So that's your selector button or your select button. Then you have your menu button, which is basically a backstab menu, and then your home button, which will actually take you to the home screen no matter where you are. Uh, on top of that, you have your Siri, which is your little voice, your little microphone there. And then the bottom, again, play pause. So you can play pause easily. On the right here, this is volume control, which is also new you can actually control the TV volume. Um, the nice thing about this remote, it will automatically, if you have, when it's set out of the box, it'll automatically try to figure out what TV you have and control your TV. So in this case, the I can actually turn the power of the TV on and off when I try to turn on the Apple TV with the home button. Um, same thing when I put the TV, uh, Apple TV to sleep, if I push and hold the home button to put it to sleep, it'll also turn off the TV as long as they keep if I have it within infrared uh, range of the TV. This is a Bluetooth remote rather than only an infrared remote. So Bluetooth to the actual Apple TV box, infrared to control your volume and TV functions. Uh, it also is a rechargeable remote rather than having a button battery that you replace here on the back with a lightning port just like your iPhone, iPad has in the past. So easy to charge. And uh, they said charging, you know, it's going to last months. So I don't have enough experience with that yet. Um, I don't always believe exactly what they say. So I'll let you know what I find out here in a future video. But uh, um, after playing around with it all weekend long, uh, since it's launched on Friday, I really am loving the new remote. I will say that. Now, I've already heard reports of, watch out, it's glass. And if you drop it on tile or a hard floor or something like that, you can shatter this puppy. Uh, and they're not cheap. I think it's like 79 bucks for a new one. So don't expect, you know, don't just throw this around like it's nothing. That said, you can control the TV with this remote if you want to as well. Uh, you can also uh, program any remote control to control the Apple TV. So um, you don't have to have this, but that touchpad makes everything really, really nice. So that's what I'll tell you right off the bat. And when we get into the... Uh, the demo here, I'll show you that as well. So that's pretty much all I have to show you physically here. Um, let's get into it and I'll show you some of the stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. 
So welcome back to my living room. And I have my Apple TV set up over there. And I have my remote in my hand. And I'm next to my big 60 inch. Well, it is, it's still a projection, rear projection L, L, um, HDTV. Uh, it still puts out really good pictures, so I have a hard time upgrading. However, 4K is coming. But that said, um, with the home button on the remote, which is the one that has a little TV, I click that, and then I'm pointing it at the TV. It's going to click on not only the Apple TV, but actually use the infrared frequency that it learned from my TV and turn on my TV as well. So finally, this is the Apple TV that actually will control your TV as well. Uh, in my, and I'm, I'm not 100% how easy this is throughout all brands of TVs out there, and I'm sorry that you're gonna, it's gonna hard, get hard to see me. Maybe I'll kick on a light here. Um, but this is going to be finally the first remote that'll actually control everything. So let me, uh, let me rearrange my lighting conditions to make sure you can see me, so. So, a little better hopefully. This is the new menu. And with the touchpad that's actually built into the remote, I can now navigate that menu. I've already can downloaded several applications. When you first get the Apple TV, all you're gonna have is the core Apple services, the iTunes, the App Store, computers, music, um, iPhoto, uh, settings, search, everything else is downloaded. So even Apple's Trailers app is a download now. Um, you choose what you want on your TV, right? Uh, similar to other, like the Fire TV, which I have down below, or uh, the Roku boxes, right? It is a full-blown app store. You choose if you want Netflix or not. It's not chosen for you. So right away, I downloaded the core features that I personally use. YouTube, Netflix, HBO Now, Hulu, uh, trailers I use quite a bit, Flickr, Periscope, um, and some games, you know, some for my kids, some for me to try out. Um, and there's a lot more games out there that I do want to try eventually. And maybe, you know, I'll probably update this video like I did my Apple TV third generation. <clears throat> so, it's, you know, it, it's literally, you point, you know, you, you move your thumb around on the touchpad and you choose what you want, right? Um, I will say right out of the gate that I've been expecting this fourth generation Apple TV for a very long time. <laughs> Ever since I got my third generation, I've been, oh, what's good? what are they going to do with the next one? Um... They met almost every single one of my expectations with this generation. Uh, the speed is up to par now. It's up to where it's, to be honest, is probably, if not the fastest box, one of the top two fastest boxes. Um, but uh, yes, I know it's not 4K ready, and I wasn't expecting 4K. And here's why, and here's where my whole 4K thoughts go on this one. TVs of the future are 4K. If you want to put 4K content on your TV, it's going to be streaming, right? And I don't understand why you would buy the Fire TV or the uh, Roku Fire TV that are or the Roku TV that are 4K because the only 4K content out right now is streaming, and every single 4K TV that you have, that is out there has that capability built into it. Unless you had the first generation 4K TVs and you had some problems with that, but then you don't have the correct HDMI input to get it. So. The, the TVs currently that are 4K are going to have all that capability built in. So you're not going to use an external box to access 4K Netflix or access 4K Amazon or any of those 4K uh, online streaming boxes. So in all reality, until iTunes becomes 4K reliant, the 4K Apple TV is not a, a must, right? Yes, I do agree that even though it wasn't a must, they probably should have made it available on it. However, if you're a smart company, you make the 4K on the next one so everybody upgrades again. So it kind of forces upgrades. And I, I, not that I condone that. I'm just saying that's, that's business sense. That's what that is. So that said, 4K gaming would have been awesome. So, however, you can definitely tell, um, uh, and I actually took this and actually put it on uh, a couple 4K TVs, that this menu system looks amazing on a 4K TV. And I really hate to think that they didn't actually render this stuff in that higher resolution and then just dumb it down for the box. 
uh, which means that maybe it's upgradable in a software patch. I have no idea, and I'm not going to speculate on that right now. I'm just saying that it looks amazing, whether it's on an HD or a 4K TV. It even looks better on a 4K TV. Um, so one thing right out of the ba box that I actually um, noticed is this 3D-esque feel to it. Uh, if I actually take my thumb... Uh, so right now I'm just highlighting on the TV shows, and I move my thumb around a little bit without actually moving to the next one. You can see this box seems like it's it's twirling around, right? Same with the YouTube, right? Or the App Store, all of these guys, right? Um, one thing that I've noticed is here. You can really see on this wherever I put my thumb on here, you can see where there's a light source. Oh, excuse. Let's bring it back down a little bit so I can point to it a little better. But also that you can see that it is actually kind of 3D-esque. It actually is separate planes. So as I move around, you can see the background move a little more behind the buggy. Let's get back over there. So you can see that tree back there. Or the door. Disappear, right? They actually are doing a 3D type modeling within the actual Apple TV itself with the menu system. And it doesn't just stop with the menu system. Uh, let's go over to, t to movies. And uh, Jurassic World does a really good job of simulating that as well. You can see that there's a different play between the background, where the Jurassic World sign is, where the raptors and stuff are. They actually are moving around as I do this little 3D motion to it. And that's something so small that you really have to pay attention to it. Uh, at first I was like, oh man, these are really neat. And then I realized that, oh, oh, they're actually doing like a like the 3D thing that they do with the iPhone, with the 3D, with that, the background. Um, pretty cool and it's not with every single one so if I go to like an old movie like Scream here you know they're adding some lighting effects but there's no depth enhancement on that one but all the newer ones for the most part um, inside out same thing you can see that 3d movement-esque type thing to it which is pretty sweet which yeah I think that's pretty awesome. It, it just highlight it. It's not something they needed to do, but you can tell the, the attention to detail what they did. So that's pretty sweet. Well, let's get into the core guts of it. Uh, iTunes, or movies, the iTunes is very similar. So you can go to, it's going to start in top movies and you can see the top movies and you can go down to the deals and just like before. Um, if you hit the menu button, so this is what's going to change. The menu button is always going to step you back, right? So if I hit the menu button, it's going to bring me back right now. But if I was like, let's go to a TV show, let's go to another model, let's show you, show you what this one looks like. Let's say I'm back to, I'm looking at The Walking Dead or um, Season 6. So as that loads. Um, I can come down here and look at the different stuff, right, and read about it. If I hit the menu button, it's going to take me back to the main um, TV section. But same thing as if I, let's go into Archangel. Uh, if I was to, rather than hit the menu button, let's say I'm in here, uh, or, you know, you can think of Netflix. So I'm I'm six menus deep in Netflix uh, looking at the information, and, oh, man, I'd really rather do something else. You can now just hit the home button, the one that I turn the TV on with. And if I hit that one, boom, I'm back to home. I don't have to worry about going back and back and back and back and back and back. So that was a vast improvement over the previous generation of Apple TV. The ability to get back to the home screen in a snap. Right, um, and of course I don't have to point the remote at the Apple TV because it is Bluetooth to the Apple TV. So uh, whether or not I'm pointing it at you or pointing it at the sky or whatever, or covering it with my hands or my dogs sitting in front of it, which happens a lot to me, um, it's still going to work. Uh, now, obviously, to order, in order to control the volume or turn the TV on and off, that's infrared to the TV or your sound bar or whatever you have hooked up. So. Um, App Store, we're going to go into that puppy because this is obviously, this is it. This is what everybody wants to see, right? This is what everybody really wants to be able to do. And there's going to be one thing that I don't like about the App Store currently. And I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But at the top, Featured Purchase Search, right? Featured, you can see what's featured right now. What are they showing off? And, you know, they'll have, just like on the iPhone and the iPad, the App Store is going to have a list within each of these guys you'll be able to see. I'm not going to go into every single app available because that's just a joke and you can obviously figure it out or find out online what they are out there but and they're going to it's going to change constantly and how much each one is and um, I will say that there are a lot of apps that I already purchased on my iPhone or my kids iPads and I already had access to them so I, that's awesome I didn't have to pay for playing these games again I love that that is awesome um, but 
you can also go up to purchased and see what apps do you have available that you've already purchased, whether it was in your iPhone or iPad or whatever. Um, you can see all the ones that you purchased. And whether or not they're free or not, they're on here. So, reach recent 30, so all my apps that I've purchased is, to, is a total of 38 apps. That's what I have available to me on this currently based on what I've purchased elsewhere. And not, I haven't downloaded all of these yet. Um, but I'm going to slowly do it as I want to try them out. I want to make sure I try each of them out. So, Computers, as before, is going to access your iTunes shared libraries. Now, this is one of those things that I use every day because I like to download all the movies that I've purchased onto my computer rather than stream them every time. So, yes, I have a decent amount of stuff that I've purchased through my iTunes account, which I can access through the movies portal here just like before. However... I don't like to use my bandwidth up just by watching movies, which I watch a lot of movies, so I download them to my computer, to my iTunes library, and share them. Not only, not only that, every single DVD, Blu-ray that I own, I digitally ripped onto my computer, so I have access to them through my Apple TV without having to get the disc out and use a Blu-ray player. I don't have a Blu-ray player anymore. I have, well, I guess my PS4 is a Blu-ray player. But. So, if I go into computers, just like before, I'm going to be able to see my shared library and go into my movies and see my movies. Now, this is where I really wish that Apple would have changed something. Um, and of course, my hard drive has to spin up, so it's on an external hard drive because my, my collection is fairly large. I really wish that they would have integrated something that I could just skip to every movie title that starts with the letter M, right? This has not changed at all from the previous generation Apple TV, which is not a bad thing, it's just it could have been done better. And I'm really hoping that this is something that Apple changes in the near future. Can't use Siri very easily, I guess. Um, I, it's not reliable. How about this? If I say, you know, play Wolf of Wall Street, it's not going to go play Wolf of Wall Street. It's going to go to movies and show me where I can play Wolf of Wall Street. If I, But the funny thing is, the other day when I was messing around with it, I hit play Adam's Family, and it actually came down here. So let me try it. Play Adam's Family. Oh, see, now, now it didn't work. So, let's try this. Play The Addams Family. See, now it went to The Addams Family. And it's actually playing The Addams Family. Which is great! I really, really wish that I would do that more often. So, it's it's still a work in progress. I'm not going to hold it against them. Because this is a brand new generation Apple TV. It's just off of the testing with the developers. And things are going to have to get fixed as we go. I'm just hoping that they actually repair this in the future. So when I do my second review in the future, when I have more, you know, obviously there's more apps and things like that, I want to revise this. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, so you still have to, you have to, you know, do that in order to do it. So that's my caveat with the whole shared library. It's, it works, it works great. And to be honest, it's a lot faster loading. Um, but I wish that, yeah, it would have been done that. The other thing that you may... If, I don't know if you noticed this before, and maybe my, my soundbar wasn't turned on just yet. But you're getting these... Uh, here, let me turn it up. Now, you can turn this off. It was actually driving my wife nuts. I'm like, hey, just get used to it. It's a different clicking noise than the previous generation Apple TV. So, something to get used to, right? Uh, music, obviously, they have Apple Music on here now, so if you subscribe to Apple Music, you can play whatever the heck you want. Um, you also have the radio stations, um, search, everything's just like it is on your phone for the most part, but a little bit different, obviously, tuned for the Apple TV experience. Uh, then we'll go down here where I have my photos, which I'm not going to go to that, but that's actually your iPhotos. You can see your stream and stuff like that. YouTube, YouTube experience is very, very similar to what was on the previous generation Apple TV, which works great, to be honest. Uh, you have your home, your subscriptions, your YouTube, your My YouTube stuff. Um, access the videos and play, right? I'm not going to get into stuff, into how to play. Netflix, very similar app that, from before as well. Um, let's go into my account here. Um, but it is the newer of the Netflix menus, right? So you have access to all your good Netflix stuff. Uh, you can change accounts up here. You can do go to your settings. Um, yeah, you can get into basically all the standard Netflix stuff. HBO Now is HBO Now. And, and I'm not going to get into every single one of these apps. It's, it's not really a necess necessity, I guess. Um, 
the big thing is settings, right? Because settings is where you're going to actually be able to change anything that you want to do with the Apple TV or anything that's built into it. Um, general is going to have access to all this good stuff. Now, the screensaver, which I'll show you in a moment, is the new, their new basically live like video screensavers. Um, in this case, it's called Aerial, which is an aerial flyover of various cities and things like that. You can change that. You can change how often it gets new videos, um, starting after five minutes, shortering music, and you can preview it. And I'll show you an easy way to preview it as well. How long to sleep, accessibility for, obviously for accessibility reasons, closed captions, voiceover, stuff like that. Um, if I go down to restrictions, you can change restrictions. So parental controls, how often do you want to ask for a password when you're actually doing, you know, purchasing content from the uh, iTunes store. Um, you can change all this good stuff, explicit language controls, things like that. Privacy, uh, location services, send stuff to Apple, and you know, if whatever, if there's an error or whatever, a lot of Mac they send stuff are just your standard usage. Um, and you can obviously limit ad tracking. Siri, you can turn Siri on or off, and this is just the standard Siri privacy policy, which I'm not going to bar you with. Uh, storage, you can actually see how much storage is being taken up by all of your applications that you have. So right now, Starbucks Kids is my biggest one, and a lot of these are tiny, so Flickr is 2 megs, <laughs> not a whole lot of space. And of course, I'm assuming that this is not actually telling you how much is cached, that it is just free flow. Uh, this is hardcore app. You know, if you download this, the app's gone. It's not saying, in the background, the stuff that we can automatically control, this isn't uh, telling you how much that is, so... Um, kind of wish that they would tell you how much space you had left because I don't see anywhere in there that tells you, oh yeah, you, out of your 64 gigs, you've used X. Uh, set date automatically, time zone, language, and region. Now, the other thing, if we back back out, next one is going to be accounts. I'm not going to go into this because this has all my private information, but this is where you can actually sign into your account for not only the iTunes store, but also you can sign into your gamer's account. and have, So if, somebody, if you don't do the gaming, your kid does the gaming, you can sign into their gaming account for that, send into yours for the actual iTunes account, um, and iCloud Photos account and stuff like that. You can actually change all of your account information there. Uh, audio and video setup, you can change all of your outputs, just like you did pretty much for the most part for before. Uh, surround sound, navigation clicks, this is where you can turn this off. Um, HDMI out, resolution, <laughs> calibrate, and uh, change all of that. So within the Calibrate menu, zoom and overscan and color bars, this is where you can actually uh, change, basically it puts, all it does is put something up here and you can actually take it into your TV's menu and, and adjust it. So you can see on mine, I'm slightly underscanned on mine. Uh, and the problem is, is if I over, if I try to change that, it, it brings it too small. So this is the better for my TV. Mine's an older TV, like I said before. Uh, the newer TVs, I'm sure it's going to fit a lot better, to be honest. I haven't had a problem with any newer TV. So, one of the problems with you having the older TV, AirPlay. You, I call mine living room because I have several Apple TVs in the house. Uh, you can play stuff from iCloud automatically. So, what this is is that if you like were on your Apple, on your iPhone or whatever, and you want to hit a, hit a movie that's on your that you own through iTunes, it's going to automatically try to uh, stream it from iCloud. And you can turn that on or off your choice. So if you prefer not to stream, so if you have it downloaded to your iPhone, you can actually play it from your iPhone if you want. It's just, this is just saying that it's going to try to download, just do it directly from iCloud rather than waste your phone's battery, right? <clears throat> and then uh, require device certification. Um, if this is obviously for AirPlay in order to use AirPlay, so. Uh, remotes and devices, this is where you can actually uh, link a Bluetooth controller or another remote or other Bluetooth device, keyboard, things like that. Um, you can also change how much uh, tracking the touchpad has. But within the Bluetooth, uh, right now I have my remote connected and you can obviously connect more, just put it in the learning mode and connect it in here. Uh, so I tried, even though they said they couldn't do it, I was like, you know what I did with my Fire TV? So I tried linking my PlayStation 4 Bluetooth controller. It finds it, it links it, it just doesn't do anything. So I really, really wish that that would be a thing in the future so hopefully they map that uh, just like before you can actually learn a remote so let me grab that real quick because they have it over here all right so I actually learned my Sony actual my TV remote control and that was probably not very dark as I have to set so 
But in learning remote, just like before, you can go in here and actually start learning remote. I learned my Sony remote, so when I hit up and down, oh, let me give it over to the correct settings. When I hit up and down on my directional pad, now this is infrared, not Bluetooth, but I can control my Apple TV even with this remote. So that I did that right away, because this is what I actually controlled my previous generation Apple TV with all the time, rather than having two controllers. But now that this controller controls the TV as well, I don't need to do that. So, um, but I have it in there just in case my kids grab it, just on habit. Um, and then this is where you can actually control your TV. You can turn that on or off. Uh, volume control auto. And I never set this up. I never told it what kind of TV I had. I never, you know, even when I took the Apple TV over and hooked it in, I hooked it into a Vizio TV before as well. As soon as I plugged it in, everything, this was able to turn the volume up and down and everything on the Vizio as well. So it all, it definitely knows what you have connected. And I don't know if it's sending signals out with the controller or what, but it's figuring it out, which is pretty awesome. So. That's new to me. Apps, um, you can automatically update apps. You can choose uh, settings within each of these guys. So if I go, let's say computers, show playlist, music only. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Not looking down. Um, 1080p. You can change all these settings within any of this stuff. Um, these are going to be, uh, you know, whatever your yeah your ESN and stuff like that. So let's go down to network. Just like before, if you connect to Wi-Fi, it's going to be, you know, here's Wi-Fi you're connected to. I'm connected via Ethernet. I'd rather have it hardwired, so uh, and I have the ability to do so, so that's what I have. System. This is where you can actually be, in, be able to restart and reset your actual Apple TV as well. So if you have some kind of glitch or whatever, you can actually restart it. Uh, this is where you can change how you get software updates automatic or not, or try to update it manually. Just like before, to be honest, and all your help and legal stuff. And then sleep. And sleep you can actually access from the uh, remote as well. So I'm going to show you that real quick before we go any further. Uh, if you actually push and hold on the TV button while pointing at it, and, hit, and actually it'll ask you, do you want to sleep? You hit yes, and you keep your TV, the remote pointing at the TV, it'll also turn off of the TV when you go to sleep. So a little energy saving trick there, right? Same thing is, uh, if you actually take the menu button and double click that one, it's going to actually take you right into the screensaver mode which in this case is the aerial mode. Now, obviously you can see it's slowly moving. The boat over here is slowly moving. If you actually get, cl if you get closer, you'll actually start seeing cars and stuff like that. It is a video, it's an aerial video, um, which is pretty awesome, if you ask me. And if you just hit any button, it's gonna cancel you back out. Um, let me go hit down here, show you some, uh, Let's, go, let's just show you a game. So this is Buggy Racing, and I'm not going to go into all the games that I have, but this is kind of just to show you... Let me kill the volume a little bit here. This is to show you what gaming is kind of like. So in this case, I'm going to turn the controller on its side, kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that very well, because I do have it manually doing here. But I'm going to hit a play, and let's just uh, hit career mode. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> I don't want to save. Oh, how do I exit out of that? Oh, just by hitting that. All right. Um, sure, whatever. My my daughter was playing this for a little while, so and you can sign into your gamer's account right there as well. So you make sure you're getting credit for it. Um, several people have tr played gaming on this already, and it's all this one game is automatically it, and they do a tutorial mode at first. Um, but you can you know. Kind of like Mario Kart. Put an oil slick out. Ah. But it's it's like Wii gaming, so you're, you're steering with the controller. And to be honest, it's very accurate, is what I found. So, this that's gaming. And I'm going to cancel back out. But that's, you know, every game is going to be a little bit different for its controls. But it's very fluid. It looks very, very good. It definitely has more than enough horsepower behind the Apple TV to do these mobile type games. Um, I'm going to have download more of those more sophisticated, you know, sophisticated games as they come out. I'm going to try more and more and I'll have another review for things like that. But this is more on the actual Apple TV itself. Trailers, Mr. Jump. And, you know, I can get into all these apps as well, but I'm not going to. Um, one other thing, if I actually, same thing with that home button again, the one with the TV that you turn everything on. If I double click that, just like on your app, your iPhone, your iPad, you'll actually be able to switch you know, multitask between apps, right? You can actually, oh, well, this is the app I was going to go to. Same thing if I swipe up, 
it's going to cancel all these guys out. So I can close them down. So if you're having an app that has a problem, you can actually close that app down and restart that app. Rather than restarting the entire TV, you can actually just try closing that app out. So, and obviously, messing around with all this stuff in the last how many days, there's so many things I've had open. Well, actually, I've done that, I don't know how many times, closing things out just to try it out, I guess. But that's the new Apple TV. And like I said, almost all of my wishes were met with the Apple, new Apple TV. Uh, there are a couple. And you know what? We're going to show you Siri real quick as well. So if I say, um, show me George Clooney movies, you know, it's going to actually show me George Clooney movies. If I say, um, what's the weather outside? Like, it's going to show me here in view because this, what's my weather forecast? I don't know who you are. So that's interesting. You know, there's things that she obviously... What's my weather forecast this week? Oh, now she gets it. So, it's still in its infancy. It's got glitches. It's got things that they need to work on. Um, but, you know, even that. Seriously, October in Iowa? That's awesome. <laughs> that's more like October in Iowa. Um, so... Yeah, here's the thing. The Fire TV has Alexa. Alexa is a much better assistant than Siri is currently, on this device at least. Um, Alexa, I mean, what is 500 times 100? Oh, Alexa, what is 500 times 100? Oh, maybe she's not hearing me. Alexa? What is a thousand times four hundred and thirty two? One thousand multiplied by four hundred thirty two is four hundred thirty two thousand. So Alexa knows more than Siri does right now, and she is a great assistant. And if you want your TV to be able to tell you all these little things and look up Wikipedia pages and tell you the definition of whatever, Alexa is a better assistant. Because Siri on the Apple TV is designed specifically for the TV. And there's gonna I'm sure they're gonna integrate more and more features in there. But if you're watching a TV, and actually let me show you something real quick uh, that I love about how the new one works. So let me just open up a movie that I own. Um, whatever. I don't know. Anything, yeah, whatever. Ace Ventura. Great, awesome movie. Um, let me turn the volume down so I'm not worrying about talking over this. As it loads, there is no fast forward, next chapter, previous chapter, rewind controls on this remote control. Specifically on purpose. And they did it awesomely. So, movie starts. Oh, no, that's not where I was. Click the touchpad. It pauses the movie and brings you up. This is where you are. I can just scroll right through. Ah, you know what? No, I was right about there. And click again on the touchpad. Boom! I started off exactly where I was, right? It is awesome for fine-tuning. So I can just go back here, click on that, and do it. And this works for no matter where I am. Where If I'm in movies, if I'm in YouTube, if it doesn't matter where I am, um, which is awesome. Let's, let's head over to YouTube. Let's pull up a YouTube video. Um, I don't know what's trending today, but it's so much easier to, to find, oh, I don't know if you've ever had this, this happens to me a lot, watching a YouTube video, maybe it's a 10 minute video, and six minutes through, my kids need something, so I just, rather than hit pause, I accidentally hit back, and it brings me back to here. Well, if I go back into that YouTube video, it's going to start from fresh again. And then you have to mess around with it uh, to get it back to where you want. So let's go to the laugher. Oh, no, I, I, I hit pause it. So, oh, no, I was right about there. That's where I actually was. Boom! I'm sorry, that is awesome. And I, I, you know, try to find another box that can do it like that, because that, which literally took me a good day to actually get down on how to, how to use it, click on the touchpad, scroll to where you are, click again, it starts up. That's awesome. Thank you, Apple, for making Fast Forward Rewind and Next Chapter, Previous Chapter into one simple little click, right? Because that's just awesome. So, 
one of those things that I just, yeah, I, I absolutely love. I love with the Apple TV. You know, there is one more thing I wanted to show you real quick before I close out the video that I almost forgot about. And that is with the iPhone and AirPlay. And with before, AirPlay works exactly like it did on the old generation Apple TV. And you, you swipe, oh, let's see if I can do it without actually looking at my phone. You hit the AirPlay button. You can you choose the Apple TV that you have at bedroom, or no, you know what, we're living room, geez. And let's mirror, let's move, mirror the entire device. So the thing is, is that it's a lot faster now. And a lot higher definition. Um, it doesn't have that pixelation when you go too fast. It's definitely getting information significantly faster than it did before. Um, so even when I go to you know full screen mode here, when I'm going back and forth, things look a lot better. Things are a lot peppier. Um, so one of those things that obviously the new A9 chip that they put in this puppy, yeah, it took care of all of the uh, AirPlay issues they had in the past. So I just wanted to show you that real quick before I close it out. Now, now back to me. Um, but that said, there are other things. If you have suggestions for future video reviews or videos, specifically with the Apple TV, if you want me to showcase something that you can do or how to use the Apple TV, don't hesitate to comment below. Um, you know what? Um, also, you can send me direct email. And you know what? I'm going to actually set up an email box directly for this guy. So Apple TV at thetechgooch.com. You can send in suggestions, and I will definitely take those to heart and try to show you something. So I'm going to do a lot of smaller videos with this guy as well. But so far, uh, perfect Christmas present, best smart TV box to date. I can honestly say that with confidence. I do love the new Fire TV. I really do. It's fast. It's got, it's got Alexa. It's awesome. That's why I have both. Uh, now, I, I shouldn't say that. I do not have the current generation Apple TV, or Fire TV. I have the last generation, but I do have the Echo. So, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Apple TV, my number one box now again. Thank God, because the older one was definitely aging, although I still love the old one. The new one is substantially better. So, uh, that said, I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, comments, post those guys below. Subscribe above, like the video. And I will see you guys next time.